Welcome everyone to this second Tadpole webinar. I hope you can hear me now. Um, so I'm Danny Alexander. I am the coordinator of the Europond project and leading the organization of the Tadpole Challenge together with all of these people listed here, each of whom has made invaluable contributions um, and without whom it couldn't have happened. So I thank all of them. So the purpose of these webinars is to communicate to and take feedback from the community participating in the challenge. I'm going to talk for about 15 minutes and then we'll have a chance for some questions and answers. There are various channels you can use to communicate with us during the presentation or afterwards. You can use the live chat during the presentation that's associated with this stream to ask questions or give feedback. You can tweet us at Europond. You can email tadpole at cs.ucl.ac.uk and there'll be people monitoring all of those channels during the presentation, so please feel free to use any of them. So let me start with the Tadpole timeline. We launched the challenge back in June and we had the first webinar in the middle of July. That's still archived at that YouTube link there. During that webinar, I gave a general overview of the motivation and format of the challenge. I don't propose to repeat that now, but instead to give you some updates and refinements and decisions that we've made on the channel in uh, on the challenge in response to feedback that we've had since that webinar. Specifically, I will detail the prize schedule to you and talk about some new tools that we've put onto the website. The timing of this webinar is no coincidence. The con consultation phase that we defined at the start of the challenge ends just in a few days' time on the 15th of August. So this represents a last chance for us to communicate decisions that we've made on the challenge so far and for you to feed a last chance to feedback before those get pinned down after the end of the consultation phase. However, let me just start with a brief overview of Tadpole, just to put the rest of the talk in context. So what is Tadpole? It's a challenge to predict progression of individuals at risk of AD. Specifically, the task at the heart of the challenge is to identify people within a group who are at an age that puts them at risk of contracting AD, who will actually start to show symptoms in the short to medium term. So that's over the next one to five years. This is an incredibly important task in AD research and management. It's become increasingly clear that a, an effective treatment will need to be administered to patients at very early stages in the development of the disease, and most probably before any outward sign of symptoms appear. And for that reason, for the development of treatment through clinical trials and for eventually for its administration to the right people, it's crucial that we can identify people who are going to make that progression before they show any outward signs of symptoms. And that's the task that's at the heart of the Tadpole Challenge. So the, challenge is fo the challenge focuses on the ADNI dataset, that's the Alzheimer's Disease Neuroimaging Initiative. And this is a study that's been running for over a decade now, collecting a variety of different kinds of data from people in that age group. We focus here particularly on subjects that ADNI call rollover subjects. These are people that have provided data historically within previous iterations of the ADNI study and have committed to provide follow-up data in the next phase of the study, which is just beginning now. And that gives us the opportunity to learn from their previous measurements and to make predictions about their future measurements. So the essence of Tadpole is extremely simple. We provide a list of these rollover subjects. Participants are then asked to forecast future measurements from these rollover subjects by a submission deadline, which is in November. Tadpole will then store those forecasts securely, and we wait for a period during which follow-on data from these rollover subjects gets acquired. And once sufficient data is acquired, we expect that to be in a year or a year and a half from now, we will evaluate those forecasts against that future data and award the prizes to the forecasts that best match that future data. So here is the currently proposed prize schedule. Let me start by thanking our sponsors, the Alzheimer's Society, Alzheimer's Research UK, and the Alzheimer's Association for generously donating 
a substantial prize fund of 30,000 Great British Pounds. The plan is to divide that prize fund into six £5,000 categories. Let me start with the first three. So we're asking participants to make forecasts of three particular features of the rollover subjects. First, the, the future clinical status. So that's just three categories, cognitively normal, probable Alzheimer's disease, and an intermediate category, mild cognitive impairment, which is broadly considered a prodromal phase to Alzheimer's disease. The second feature is ventricle volume. The ventricles are an anatomical feature at the, in the middle of the brain, which tend to expand as the neurodegeneration in Alzheimer's disease progresses. We can measure it using magnetic resonance imaging, and that's where that measurement will come from. The third feature is ADAS-13. This is a composite cognitive score combining various written and verbal assessments of cognitive capability. So we propose to provide a £5,000 prize for the best forecast of each of these individual features from our set of rollover subjects. The fourth prize is an overall performance that combines the quality of forecasts from each of those three independent categories. And the overall Tadpole champion will be the team that provides that best overall performance. The last two prizes we're reserving for two particular classes of participant and specifically for different groups of early career researchers. So the first is for university students, that can be undergraduates, masters or PhD level, and the second is for pre-university students, so we're thinking of high school teams or science or STEM clubs. And the aim here is to encourage participation from these early career researchers uh, and also to raise awareness of the challenges and problems in AD research among these groups of people. So how specifically do we define best in each of these categories? On the website we define a number of different metrics. They're listed here. I'm not going to tell you about them in detail but you can look up the details on the website. I'm just going to tell you which of these metrics we're going to use to evaluate each of the, the different prizes. So to assess the clinical status prediction will use the multi-class area under the ROC. So this exploits the probabilistic nature of the forecasts that we ask for for the three classes. We don't just ask for what's the most likely class, but the relative likelihood of the three classes. And multi-class area under the ROC uses those probabilities in a, a balanced and fair way. For the ventricle volume and ADAS 13 score, we plan to use the simple mean absolute error. So this doesn't account for confidence intervals, which we also ask participants to contribute. But we decided in the end that this simple score is the least vulnerable to pathological forecasts scoring unreasonably highly. So we're just going to stick with this simple mean absolute error. That said, we will evaluate all of these metrics and provide rankings uh, of all of the teams using all of the metrics it's just that we'll use those two to determine the prizes. For the overall prize, we pr plan to use the minimum sum of ranks in the three distinct feature categories. So, for example, if you provide the second best forecasts for clinical status and for ventricles and for ADAS 13, your sum of ranks would be six. And it still gives you a good chance of winning the overall prize, despite the fact that you didn't provide the best prediction for any of the individual features. This sum of ranks does open the possibility of a tie and should that arise we plan to use the clinical status prediction to break the tie. Various conditions and caveats associated with these prizes. For the last two categories, the student categories, we will require some kind of proof of student status. Typically this will be a signed letter from your institution or high school or STEM club. That will be sufficient. We also reserve the right to reallocate the prize, the prize fund that we've allocated to those categories if we don't get sufficient engagement. Um, so th this also makes it important for, uh, to hear back from people who are planning to submit within those categories. If you think that your, you or your team are eligible for entry into any of those categories, then please do let us know because it's important for us to know uh, to gauge how many entries we're expecting in each of those categories. I should also add 
that it's perfectly possible for individual teams to win multiple prizes. So, for example, a high school team that, that does, provides the best prediction of all three features could end up taking a, a, a prize haul of up to £25,000. Much uh, must, must better tadpole forecasts. So we will include some default forecasts into the, uh, into the competition. These will be very simple forecasts entered by the tadpole team. We don't expect to win, and even if we do, we won't take the prizes. The idea of these forecasts is simply to set a baseline above which prediction performance must, must exceed that baseline in order to be eligible for the prize. These will be extremely simple forecasts, just things like nothing changes and that everything at the test time is the same as the last, uh, the, the previous visit. So I, I would very strongly expect that uh, participants will be able to do better, but it gives us, uh, it avoids us having to arrive, uh, award prizes for very weak forecasts. We'll be appointing a prize committee to sanity check outcomes and take the final decisions on which teams the, the prizes go to. That prize committee will consist of representatives of the Tadpole team, our sponsors and some independent relevant researchers. We're yet to pin down the exact membership but we'll post that on the website as soon as we have. One condition on the use of the prize money, this is charity money, so it isn't just money in, in your pocket and does need to be used in some way to further AD research. That said, the sponsors are uh, fairly flexible about the usage of this uh, funding, so it might be used, for example, for travel to relevant conferences, to visit relevant labs, to buy useful equipment to further that research, or anything else that might be considered relevant to that activity. This is a slide that I've borrowed from the, the last webinar, but just to confirm, really, that, there, that this is the way that we'll run the competition, whereas previously it was just a suggestion. So there will be two different ways to enter the competition. A simple version, which makes you eligible for the prize, and a more complete version, which also makes you eligible for the prizes, but also eligible to be a co-author on the publication that arises from the challenge. So in the simple version, you have to submit a minimum of just forecasts of at least one of the three variables that we ask predictions for, together with a description of the methods you've used to make those, uh, those forecasts. The full version is, uh, requires a more complete forecast, so it requires forecasts of all three features, clinical status, cognitive score, and ventricle volume. It also requires that in addition to forecasts made from custom data sets, you also submit forecasts made from the standing training, standard training and prediction data sets that Tadpole provide. And this is in order to allow us to evaluate the impact of customization to the data processing pipeline. Furthermore, it requires forecasts from the cross-sectional prediction data set D3 in addition to the longitudinal one D2. So the simple version does not require that. In case you're, uh, you didn't see the previous webinar or are uh, new to Tadpole, you can find details on these different data sets on, on the website. And so the full version, as I said, is required in order to be able to participate in the publications that arise from the, from the challenge. Ah, and that red square is to remi remind me to say that if you are looking at D3 already, Responding to feedback that we've had from the community about the current version of D3, I think it's likely that we'll update it in over the next week or so to, uh, to refine it slightly and make the prediction slightly easier from, from its contents. So do keep an eye on the website for when that new version of D3 appears. So let me finish just by talking about some new resources that we've added to the website, which hopefully will make your task of forecasting these uh, features and measurements uh, easier. We've now included some example code for reading in the, the standard data sets into standard programming environments such as MATLAB and Python and for writing out forecasts in the format that the, that the challenge expects. So hopefully that should make sure that um, make it easier to uh, read in and process the data and also make sure that it comes out in a, in a format that uh, makes you eligible for the, for the challenge. We've also put up code 
spe the specific code that we will use for evaluating the the metrics that we'll use for the for the various prizes and ranking so that you you know exactly how the evaluation will proceed and can use that to refine your your forecasts so that example code is up on the website already and do let us know if there are other things along those lines that you would find useful and able to uh, to to facilitate making your 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 forecasts we're willing to put in the time to to put up more useful example code the other thing which is uh, a work in progress but almost there and you can see a preliminary version on the website already is what we're calling a leaderboard so the idea here is that participants can submit interim forecasts and they will get evaluated using the same procedures that we'll evaluate the final submissions with uh, in order to give a, a, a comparative ranking against other teams who are involved in the challenge. So obviously these, these scores won't reflect the, the final scores that, that we'll get because the test data isn't available yet. Um, but at least it gives you a way of sanity checking your forecasts, making sure they go through the processing pipeline and hopefully give you some idea of where you are compared to, to other teams. The way it works actually is simply to divide the currently available training data into a, an artificial holdout set and uh, a, a smaller training set. So it, it's actually quite easy to cheat. We're trusting people that they won't do that, um, but hopefully you'll, you'll find it useful. You can find the details on the website already and it should become live in the next few days. So back to the timeline just to finish off. As I said, the consultation phase ends early next week. We very much welcome suggestions and feedback up till then and we'll pin down the rules after that. We have one more webinar scheduled in the middle of September. The intention there is to go through in a bit finer detail the submission process and some of the finer details of the challenge Anything else you'd like us to talk about during that webinar, please do let us know. We're very happy to add slides on other details that might be useful. And finally, I shall leave you with some new haiku. Our poetry department has been working overdrive and producing more and more of this. We shall leave you to contemplate this as we look at your questions and provide you with some answers. Thanks for listening. Okay, thanks. So I see some questions coming in already. Are the prizes only for the winner of each category or further split into first, second and third? There may be very close results. Yes, it's a very good question and absolutely true. But the plan currently is that we'll just go for the best. I did think carefully about having first, second and third place prizes, but actually I thought it would be more fun to divide it into different categories, but to keep the prizes reasonably substantial. So I decided just to go for the first. It is true, of course, that you may end, we may end up with some very close results. And further, that the so one of the things we intend to do with the results is to run a bootstrapping procedure to at least get some idea of statistical significance of differences between performance. And you know, I think it's quite likely that we may end up with results which are ranked, but uh, that, but that there's no statistical significance between them. We took the decision actually that we'd just go with the best score anyway, but that we would be in, in awarding the prizes, but that we would be very clear in the publication of the results, both on the website and in the scientific publications that emerge, where there are statistical differences and where you know, essentially different methods are producing forecasts of equal quality. Okay, so someone else asking about what, what happens if the... Um, the participants are not statistically, the, the scores are not significant, statistically significantly different. I think I've just answered that. So actually, what was the other half of that question? Would be, yeah, so I think we will end up just going with the hard scores in, in the end to decide the prizes. But as I say, we'll, we'll make sure that we document where there are statistically significant differences and, and where there aren't. So there are loads and loads, yeah, someone's asking about the number of different columns in the, the Tadpole databases. So in particular, D1 and D2 do have a very large number of columns, I agree. There is, there's a data dictionary associated with the, the files, which is in the same package that you download from, uh, from the ADNI site. And that does give a description of all of the different columns in there. 
Um, if there's anything specific in there that you're not sure about and can't find the answer to in the dictionary, do let us know and we will endeavour to clarify. We've done the best we could to explain what all of those things are. In the full version, can we just use the standard data? Yes, you can. So actually, let me go back to that slide. So a legitimate full submission, as you ask, is simply to use the standard training and prediction data sets. You don't have to use custom data sets. It's just that if you, uh, in fact, the only thing that's compulsory in the full version is that you use the standard training and prediction data sets. Um, you can use additional custom data sets, but we want submissions from or forecasts from the standard ones as well. So to answer your question, yes, you can submit a full version that just contains predictions from the standard training and prediction data sets. It has to include the description of methods as well, of course. Why is the submission deadline so early if the test set will only become available a year later? Well, the clock is ticking on the test data. That, so we, we, it's actually fairly urgent that we have the submission deadline as soon as possible because the, the ADNI 3 phase of ADNI has already begun. So they're already acquiring data. And the longer we wait, the less of that data we'll be able to use in the evaluation period. So it's actually quite important that we... Uh, we keep the submission deadline when it is. We have contemplated moving it back to the end of the year. Might still be persuaded, but I am quite keen to keep it in November because the longer we wait, the less data we'll ultimately have to, to evaluate on. Where is the code used for performance metrics? Is it on ADNI or on the Tadpole website? It's on the Tadpole website. Where, do, you know, do we know where it is exactly? I do, yes. Yeah. So this is Neil Ox to be one of the other organisers of Tadpole. Uh, the code for all the evaluation is in our GitHub repository, which is linked from the Tadpole website. We've updated some of the pages just recently, so you should go on there and check them all out again. So that's all the questions we have from the live stream. Why use the mean absolute error and not the weighted error score? Well, so we had some debate over this, actually, and we were quite keen to use the weighted error score initially, but the problem is that it means there are, you can imagine situations where a participant might specify a very low confidence in certain groups of the data, you know, from that's come from a particular centre or something, um, and that means that the you know the outcomes then you know essentially are evaluated on different subsets of the data, making making the methods much less comparable. So we decided in the end that the mean absolute error was probably the fairest way to go. Making it just makes all of the results more directly comparable with one another. So that was where that decision came from. That said, you know I strongly encourage people to think carefully about providing realistic conf uh, confidence intervals. I think this is something that we'll concentrate on quite a lot in the scientific publication that comes out of the challenge is accuracy, you know, self, um, self assessment of accuracy in predictions and how well different methods are, are able to do that because I think that is something that will be important in future AD research and, and management. Okay, so I think that's all the questions that we've had immediately. So we'll wrap up for now. But if there are any other questions arising, please do feel free to contact us through uh, the usual channels. If you're watching this after the event, you can still email us at tadpole.cs, tadpole.cs.ucl.ac.uk. You can tweet us at Europond or find any other way to get in touch and we'll do our best to respond to anything. Thank you very much for listening.